A man once told me if you want a good story just ask any random person if there was ever an event in their life they cannot explain. Someone almost always has one weird thing that has happened to them. So Reddit, regardless of whatever you believe about the world, do you have a story as such? A couple of years ago on Black Friday I woke up with an eerie feeling. Like something was wrong. And just had an overall uneasy feeling that freaked me out. It was about 2 a.m. At the time. So I walked upstairs and stood in my parents kitchen. Not even a minute later my mom walks out and asks me if I'm feeling weird. I say yeah. And that it was keeping me up. She says she is feeling the same way. And we just stand there for a minute or two in silence. Suddenly the phone rings. And it's my grandmother. Apparently my grandpa woke up around 2 with chest pains. And was being rushed to the hospital. He was about 5% blockage away from the Widowmaker. And also suffered a minor stroke. My mom and I are very close to my grandpa and grandma. But it still gives me the chills to think that we could have possibly felt something was wrong while it happened. One time I was hanging out with two friends and completely out of nowhere one of the friends and I said in unison I smell baluna. Double quote. After a few moments of confusion. The third person confirmed no bologna smell in the room and neither of us have eaten bologna since childhood. This moment has haunted me for years. In high school. My friends and I would sneak out of our houses and drive to the beach in the middle of the night. The beach is huge and we would run up and down it and splash in the water. One night. After about an hour of running around. The friend who drove realized he had lost the key at some point. The key wasn't on a keychain it was just a single key and we knew we would never be able to find it and basically we were fked. He searched up and down for an hour but we knew ultimately we would have to call one of parents to pick us up. I sat down on the beach while someone made the call and dug my hands deep, like 6 inches, into the sand and felt something. I grabbed it and pulled it out it was the key. Seriously divine intervention. In 1996 my grandma died. A couple of years prior. My uncle had come to town for a visit and brought his cat. During his stay my grandma accidentally let the cat outside. It bolted away and was never seen again. On the night we had the open casket showing. We came back to my grandparents house. On the front step sitting by the door was the cat. He had an ear to two. It was the same cat. A piece of advice I hear often when a cat goes missing is to place something you wear often outside so kitty can use the smell to navigate back home. Perhaps the scent of your uncle was in the air and kitty had been staying with a neighbor all that time. I once was driving in the University District of Seattle. WA in the middle of the night, probably 1am or so. It was just me and one passenger. We aren't from Seattle and were waiting a light to make a U-turn to find the freeway again. We were the only car at the intersection. But we waited about 3 minutes while the light was red. As soon as our light turned green. A huge marching band, presumably UWs. Began to march across the intersection and into the lane we wanted to turn into. At 1am. Every single member was in costume. And they were not playing their instruments. It was incredibly eerie and my passenger and I were just sitting there open mouthed. We both remember it exactly the same. But it was one of those memories that you think did that actually happen? Not that cool. But pretty random. A few summers ago I went prospecting camping with my so and his dad in a national forest in southern Oregon. Our claim was miles away from the nearest town up some truly scary forestry roads. We set up camp close to a stream in a big clearing. One night we were playing cards and I heard a almost guttural scream. So and his dad had been drinking and they were being so loud they missed it. After getting them to shut up for a second. I heard the scream again but from a different location. The second scream sounded more feminine or something like that. Anyways. That night we heard what sounded like someone putting their arms in the stream and lifting them out over and over again. I kid you not. It sounded like something was effing washing something in that stream. We also had rocks thrown at our tent. This was the worst night of my life. I have never been so scared. It's worse because I can't put reason behind any of those occurrences. Edit. TLDR. Bigfoot screamed at me. 
played in a stream. Then threw rocks at my tent. When I was maybe 11. Or so. I was spending some quality time with my brother. Him and I were close. But it was rare that we ever just sit around and talk about life. We have a swing set that my father had constructed for us. My brother and I sat on the swings and spoke to each other. We didn't swing. We just rested and enjoyed the weather. It was very nice. Until the peacefulness was interrupted by a, indescribable, noise. The best interpretation I could give to you all is a blood curdling. Human feline hybrid sounding. Scream. It had torn the silence and calm chatter in a split second. Him and I shot up and turned around to try to figure out what it had been. We found our German Shepherd barking like crazy at something in a tree. I had never seen her in so much defense. Seconds later whatever she was growling at had lost its grip and fallen from said tree. At this moment. My heart had dropped. Unable to get a good look at the thing. I depicted it to look like a large. Hairy. Black. Feline. Nothing native to central Ohio. The one attribute that stuck out most. It was the exact size of our full grown German Shepherd. It stumbled upward and darted down the woods. Yelping and screeching. Thus climbing up another tree. My brother and I. In unison. Glared at each other. Wide eyed and sprinted to our home. We returned 5 minutes or so later and nothing was there. To this day I haven't been able to figure out what the hell that creature was. It most certainly was nothing I've ever seen. Or my brother. One day my sister was scratching at her arm and had a little bump about 5 centimeters up from her elbow. She kept scratching at it and we asked her what it was and she replied that she didn't know and she had just woken up with it. She sat down and we were all curious by this time so I asked her what she was going to do about it. She said she wanted to cut it out. So she got a scalpel, she's a nurse. Pretty handy, and some gauze and asked me to hold the gauze in case it started bleeding. She only had to make a tiny little cut because she was going to squeeze out the pus. When she squeezed no blood came out. Just a tiny little bit of metal. It was about 1 stroke 5 of the size of a grain of rice. She said it was itching her like crazy. We were all pretty confused. We put it in a container that she had in her med bag. A little clear one with a yellow lid. So we could have a look at it and she could take it to work and ask people what it was. A few days later I asked her whatever happened to the bit of metal. She had no idea what I was talking about. She did have a tiny little mark on her arm. But nobody that was there remembers it except me. There were about 5 of us there at the time. I have two interesting stories. And they are both almost the same. I had this really intense and vivid dream that involved hills of broken red rock. And a cabin. I ran to the cabin because there were zombies everywhere. I get into the cabin and find my best friend in there with a trunk full of guns. He wordlessly hands me a shotgun and the rest of my dream is a total zombie kill fest. I woke up and ran over to my buddy's place just like most school free days. I was so totally pumped from my awesome dream that I couldn't wait to tell him about it. Well. When I get to his place. He's all shaken up and looks like hell. He told me that he had this horrible nightmare about being trapped in a little shack in this place all made of broken red rock and he had to fight off zombies all night long with me until we were back to back unloading with shotguns like crazy. I had never heard of dream sharing until that day. My first words were a sentence. We were at a parade. And suddenly. After never having said anything before. I turned to my parents and said before I picked you guys to be my mom and dad. I was a soldier. And we used to march like that. Double quote. This came out about 16 years later in family therapy. This reminds me of my childhood friend. When he was very small he would sometimes say things to his parents like. Remember that time when you were young and I was old? Double quote. Nothing interesting ever happens to me. But a friend used to work on what I'd call a corporate farm. He was sent out to do field work with a tractor but it was at night. He was out in the wide open of the field when something hovered over the tractor and illuminated the spot he was on with a powerful orangish light. Hovered for a bit and then it was gone. There was no sound accompanying it. He's not the sort that goes in for boisterous stories and tales of bravado. 
It just scared him and a story came out of him one day. So my out of town friend's parents have this oldish farmhouse on property they own. His grandparents used to live and farm there until they retired. But the land stayed in the family. They will not rent out the house. To anyone. For any reason. This event helped prompt that decision. One afternoon I was out with my friend, we'll call him John, and his buddy on the property shooting each other with paintball guns. It's early afternoon. And we decide to take a break in the house. An empty. Somewhat eerie house is irresistible to brave. Young lads like ourselves. At one point I am standing with John in one of the main rooms. While his friend is still in the doorway. Out of nowhere. John is thrown to the ground towards the door. As if someone shoved him hard in the back. I whirl around. Of course. And see nothing. All three of us booked it out of there. I don't know what on earth happened in that house. But I'm not going in again. That's for sure. Every summer my family goes to the Irish festival on Harriet Island in Street. Paul. In order to buy food at the festival. You have to go to a tent and buy food tickets. My sister and I were standing a good 50 feet away from the tent. Talking and waiting for my parents to come back with the tickets. I randomly felt someone lightly scratching my back. Normally my sister and I will do this to each other from time to time because we both like it. But about 5 seconds later. The scratching had stopped. I immediately turned around to ask my sister to continue. Only she was at the tent. Standing next to my mother. 50 feet away. There was no one else within at least 30 feet of me. I had turned around too quickly for anyone to run that far away from me that quickly. The scratching continued to happen randomly throughout the rest of our time at the festival that day. Scared me shitless each time it happened. We were vacationing at a resort village with a small sandy beach. Midway through our stay there. I dropped our room key, a metal one, in the sand and it sank instantly. We spent hours rifling through the sand around where it dropped but couldn't find it. Got a spare key from the management and continued our vacation. On our last day, a full week after we lost the key at the beach. We were sunbathing when I glimpsed something shiny on top of the sand a few feet away. It was our room key which had somehow materialized. When I was in middle school, about 10 years ago, I was in the music room one day after school. Probably for a play practice or something. It was probably cool out because I had on a kind of windbreaker jacket. Anyway. There were a few other people in the room. Sitting at a table and talking and looking at someone's pet tree frog they'd brought to school for whatever reason. I was walking on the risers in the back of the room. Facing the only people in there. The only things behind me were a tiny window that didn't open in any way. And an empty shelf. As I was walking towards the other people when something hit me in the back so hard it knocked me down on my knees. It was sharp. Like getting shot with a BB gun or something. And a few minutes later I had my friend look at my back. And in one spot. It was swollen and bruised and bleeding and there was a gash about an inch long. This is something that still bothers me to no end. There was no hole in my jacket or my shirt or anything. Even though the cut was fairly deep. I've thought about this thousands of times over the years. And I can't think of anything that could have caused that. I come downstairs and see grandma at the dining room table. She is about to say something. Mongoose is the only thing I can think to myself. No matter what she is about to say the answer is mongoose. I have no idea why I'm thinking this. I don't know what she's doing. I haven't read or seen anything recently to make me think of the critters. And I can't fathom why this thought has popped into my head. I look over and see her doing a crossword puzzle and she spits out what she wanted to ask me what is the animal that kills and eats snakes. Double quote. That was at least 15 years ago and it still bothers me to this day. My grandmother would always fuss at my grandfather for not closing the mini blinds in the formal living room the right way. Apparently the right way doesn't let sunlight reach the carpet. Grandmother was unable to use the stairs in her final days so a bed was set up in the formal living room as it was the biggest room and allowed room for the medical equipment and was closest to the kitchen and front door as she had many visitors. 
Several years after she passed away I was house sitting by myself while Gramps was out of town. After arming the alarm system, which covered every entrance and exit and would chime any time a door was open to verify was working. I closed the blinds the wrong way and closed the curtains. The next morning I came downstairs to find all the curtains open and the blinds turned the right way. Alarm still armed. All exterior doors have the deadbolts which do not have an external key. You can only open them from inside the house. So yeah that freaked me out alright. I have to. One I directly witnessed. One I didn't. The first is my mom's. Back in the 70s. She lived in an old house in uptown New Orleans that had been converted to apartments. Weird stuff used to always happen. Like she would come home from work and her dresser would have been moved to the opposite side of the room. Everyone that had a key to her apartment, landlord, etc, denied entering or touching anything. Well one night. She was sleeping when she felt someone crawl into bed next to her. No one was there. She moved out after that. The second happened at my aunt's wedding. Which was held at my house. My aunt was getting married for the first time at the age of 51. My grandmother, her mom, had died approximately 16 years earlier. All day weird stuff kept happening. Like doors flying open and then suddenly getting stuck shut. The strangest was when the doorbell which had been disconnected for months. Kept repeatedly ringing. My aunt chalked it up to grandma making her presence known. Long read. In August of 2009. I climbed MT. Fuji with my family. I was 12 at the time. Well we had the whole family which included my two younger sisters one of which was 9 years old. Which caused us to take practically all day to reach the summit. We reached the summit at about 5 p.m. and it was getting pretty dark. Well two hours later. It was nearly pitch black and we were making horrible time back down the mountain when our flashlights went out. All three of them in the same two minute period. Creepy. But we just thought it was a coincidence. At about this time we saw a couple of lights bobbing down the trail. And within a matter of minutes two young Japanese guys. Probably 20-25 came down and realized we were lost and needed help and told us to follow them. We made amazing time down the mountain and stopped. At what turned out to be 30 yards from the main trail with lots of people somehow hidden. So they could smoke. They told us to just follow the trail and and we would be out and they gave us a flashlight. My older sister and I followed them down. And they took an immediate right onto the trail. When we turned the corner. There was no one. Literally. No one was there. The closest people were about 100 feet behind us going the other way. Or 150 feet in front of us. To this day. No one in the family has any idea what happened to them. Also. The flashlight has yet to have its batteries die. Teal. Duh. Get lost climbing Japanese mountain. Guys help us down. Turn out to be ghosts. Give us flashlight with invincible batteries. Ninja edit. Wanted to turn it into Nessie post but didn't want to ruin the story. I got struck by lightning in my sleep once. Maybe. I was about 14 years old and I was asleep. I was dreaming that my sister. My friend Sarah. And I were playing in the woods out back of our house. All of a sudden. Storm clouds started to roll in and the sky turned dark. I looked up at the clouds. And lightning began crashing all around us. I yelled to my sister and Sarah to run back to the house. About a mile. We're running as fast as we can. Jumping over rocks and constantly dodging lightning. I see my house and then. All of a sudden. Lightning hits me and holds me inside the beam of light. I'm trapped in a shell of electricity. And it's very painful. I am trying to pull myself out. Suddenly I wake up. The overhead light bulb in my room is on, it was off when I went to sleep. But the outer shell case that houses the light bulbs was shattered. All over me in the bed. I tried to get out of bed and as I did. I immediately fell on the floor. Unable to get my legs underneath me. I crawled into my sister's room. Terrified and tried to wake her up. But I was unable to. Eventually I fell asleep on the floor of her closet. In the morning. I was fine. The glass was still shattered on the bed. 
and no one believed me. I am a nurse that works in a nursing home for over two years. I have worked graveyard shift the whole time I have been a nurse there and I usually get the most deaths on my shift. I have gotten used to people dying due to seeing so many people die during my time there and it is not a big deal to me anymore. I have heard all the ghost stories that run through the facility at the time I have been there. For the most part I have learned to block most of the chills of the job out but there are some times that you just cannot do that. I had one night when we had a new admission. The lady kept asking for pain pill and I was a bit too busy to get it for her immediately. After her third time asking the CNA to tell me about her pain pill I saw her standing outside her designated room in which I looked at her and pointed for her to go inside her room. She slowly went back in. I ended up giving a Valium to the CNA and told her to give it to the lady. I was too busy to check on her until about 2 hours later and she was soundly asleep. The next morning during report where the morning nurse comes in and I go home I reported she got a PRN pain pill after she got up. It was not till the later that day that I came in again for my shift that the nurse told me that why had I told her she can walk when she is bed bound. I told her again what I saw and she told me she is a hoil lift due to her age and weakness and has not walked in 7 years. I then tried to replay what happened in my head to see if maybe it was someone else I saw but nobody in the entire end of that hallway can walk. They all use their wheelchair. One night I had friends coming over. But I didn't know exactly what time, it was between 5 and 7 or something. Comma I'm sitting at a table next to the door with another friend just chatting. Then suddenly I decide to get up and open the door. I really could not explain why. I was just compelled to. Our other friend was outside the door and had his hand raised to knock. Frozen in shock that I'd opened the door just like one second before he was going to knock without any prompting. Later that evening. We were at dinner sharing some appetizers. At one point. Again I really couldn't say what compelled me. I grabbed the bottle of ketchup and handed it to my friend, same one that I opened the door on, literally one second before he starts saying please pass the. Wait how did you know I was going to need that? It was super creepy. I'm so late to the party. But here goes. I grew up in Roswell. New Mexico. Yup. The Roswell. Anyways one night right when my clock switched to 1. 30 on a Friday in the year 1999. My brother and I were shooting the shti trying to fall asleep. I was 8. He was 5. Everyone else in the house was completely passed out. And suddenly this incredibly blinding light fills the entire room through the window. And I mean I have never experienced a more powerful light in my life. Followed by the most deafening. Metallic exploding sound I have ever heard. I mean it was immediate. Just the flash and the boom. I thought I imagined it. But my brother was crying and I could hear my dad scrambling. My mom swearing. And my two sisters crying as well. My dad grabbed a gun and bolted outside. Setting off our alarm. I followed him out. The sky was completely clear. Not a single cloud in the sky. My dad had finished a run around the house and came back to the doorway and told me to go back inside because it was 3 in the morning. I thought it was weird he said that because like I said. My clock had just hit 1. 30. But I ignored him and ran back to my room. My dad settled everyone down and we and I rolled over to go back to sleep. My clock was shining back at me. It read 3. 15. TLDR. After a blinding flash of light and the loudest noise I've ever heard. I am unable to account for an hour and 45 minutes of my life. Oh. And this happened in Roswell. New Mexico. Yup, the Roswell. Anyways one night right when my clock switched to 1.30 on a Friday in the year 1999, my brother and I were shooting the shti trying to fall asleep. I was 8, he was 5. Everyone else in the house was completely passed out, and suddenly this incredibly blinding light fills the entire room through the window. And I mean I have never experienced a more powerful light in my life, followed by the most deafening, metallic exploding sound I have ever heard. I mean it was immediate, just the flash and the boom. I thought I imagined it, but my brother was crying and I could hear my dad scrambling, my mom swearing, and my two sisters crying as well. 
My dad grabbed a gun and bolted outside, setting off our alarm. I followed him out. The sky was completely clear. Not a single cloud in the sky. My dad had finished a run around the house and came back to the doorway and told me to go back inside because it was 3 in the morning. I thought it was weird he said that because like I said, my clock had just hit 1.30 but I ignored him and ran back to my room. My dad settled everyone down and we and I rolled over to go back to sleep. My clock was shining back at me. It read 3.15. TLDR. After a blinding flash of light and the loudest noise I've ever heard, I am unable to account for an hour and 45 minutes of my life. Oh, and this happened in Roswell. When my mom was in her 20s. She went on a 6 month boat trip with her boyfriend and other friend. One night they were just sitting at the front of the boat and they saw a light in the sky. It was glowing brighter and brighter and then shrank down to a small dot in the sky. It then zoomed off into the sky. The next day. An army boat was passing by and asked them if they had seen anything strange and they told them. The army men told my mom that it was just them practicing shooting missiles. However. It was the only army boat they ever saw during their whole 6 month trip. She still says she doesn't believe it was army practice. A friend of mine was hearing weird noises underneath his house. He said he also was creeped the hell out by it and felt weird vibes from the house. They had just moved in. But I ignored that part like a skeptic boss. I was over one time during the day, which hampers the horror movie quality of the story I guess, and he stopped me mid-sentence and alerted me to a tapping noise. Then a slam. You can access underneath the house from outside as there is a door underneath the back porch. So we go down to find it sitting wide open. There was no significant wind at all. We just stared at the door for a while. Mild urination occurring as we were alone. Nothing happened for a good 15 seconds until to our complete and utter horror. We watched as the door swung closed and locked itself. The lock is a bolt that has to be pushed really firmly through a bracket on the door frame. He tells me it still happens all the time. Well. I'm going to have a hard time sleeping after reading this thread. While in undergrad. I was doing some research that involved soil sampling. I regularly sampled several sites in a wilderness preserve. Which would take most of the day to hike through. I always brought a friend. Just for safety's sake. There was this one site. Way in the rear of the preserve that always spooked me. No real reason. It was no more isolated than the rest of the sites. But something about it didn't seem quite right. My friend and I were there once. And I was crouching over to sample the soil. I was looking down. And totally unprovoked. I felt this rising terror. Just a fuck this. Run. Feeling. I stood up suddenly. And I could see that my friend had the feeling. She said. We have to leave. Now. Double quote. We ran the entire way to the car. We still have no idea why we felt that way. But I am convinced that there was a very real danger in staying. When I was in 6th grade. My grandfather died. I was in English class. Sitting in the front row and doing my class walk. All of a sudden I felt a strong kick in the gut. Whatever happened. It was forceful enough that it made me bend over my desk in pain and brought me to tears. But it went away as fast as it came. And I was just fine a moment later. Out of curiosity. I looked at the clock in the back of the room. And it was about 10. 30. I went home at the end of the school day and found out that my grandfather. Who I was very close to. As my grandparents raised me. Had died around 10. 30. I really wish I could have an explanation of what happened. When I was about 10 or 11. I was living in western Michigan. I was out in the woods walking around in the snow by myself because no friends lived close. I thought it felt really slippery then I realized I walked into the middle of a really deep pond. And as I was walking to the other side I fell through the ice. I could not get out of the water as my body went numb. Then something grabbed me and dragged me through the ice. Until I could touch ground. I never saw what grabbed me and pushed me through all that ice. I have no clue as to how I did not drown in the bottom of that pond. I ran home. As fast as I could because I was so cold. 
I still do not know what saved my life. I went back to that spot. And there were no footprints besides mine. That pond is 14 feet deep. One summer two friends and I went camping in the boonies in Oregon. We spent our days going on trail runs and enjoyed the lakes and scenery. After one long run a friend and I decided to swim in the lake which was probably half a mile across and freezing. We got halfway and were treading water shouting back at our friend on shore. My friend and I looked into the water between us and an American flag was floating about 8 inches under the water. We got really creeped out and swam back to shore as quickly as possible and could never explain why a 2 feet American flag in great shape was floating in the middle of a lake in the middle of nowhere. TLDR went swimming w a friend in a remote lake and found an American flag floating between us. I was in the bath one day when I was about 12. So this was roughly 14 years ago. Anyway. I was chilling in the bath making tsunamis as you do and I realized it was time to hop on out and go play on my brother's Commodore 64 with him and my now brother-in-law. But I soon realized I had forgot a towel. So I shout down to my mother to bring one up and directly my brother's room. Thinking he was hilarious he starts repeating everything I say but in a childish voice. Basically taking the piss out of me. This went on for roughly 5-10 minutes. Eventually my mother hears my plights for help. And comes upstairs with a towel where I tell her to politely tell my brother to shut the fck up. She then tells me that my brother and brother-in-law left the house about 5 minutes after I got in the bath and she was the only other person in the house. Needless to say strange shti has occurred and does occur to this day. Not just to me but other people as well. Used to it though. I'm a little late to the party. But this story fits perfectly. When I was younger my dad would often come into my room when he got home from work. Usually late at night. And tuck me into bed. I would sometimes be asleep. But the sound of the door usually woke me up enough to acknowledge him before falling back to bed. One night. I remember hearing the door open and looked up over the covers at my dad. He was standing at the edge of my bed as he always does. And would soon be moving to kneel next to me. Only this time. Something was off. He didn't move. Just stood there watching me from the foot of the bed. Now my first thought was that it wasn't my dad. But I knew for certain as was by the shape of his shoulders and the cap on his head. I called his name like he was just messing with me. Instead of responding. He closed the door and sat down on the couch across the room. At this point I was pretty annoyed and just wanted some sleep. So called his name again. Only more forcefully. Irritably I got out of bed and walked over to him. Now from the time I put my foot on the floor to the time I got within 6 inches of his face. I had not taken my eyes off him. Yet. There I was. Staring at a blank couch. I couldn't move for a moment. As if my brain had shut off. I was alone in that room. I quickly crawled back into bed and fell asleep. But chill I got from realizing I was staring at nothing stayed with me on through the next day.